Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of That's a Wrap. So we are here again, another episode. This is going to be a pretty big one because today our topic is our most anticipated films of 2016. I am pumped for today's show. Absolutely. I've been, I've been, we have been waiting to do this one because we know, as everybody else, this is the year of the superhero. Yep, movie. that's right. I'm your host, Aaron. You may know me as Caboose XBL. I'm here with my co-host, Ender. How are you so, doing, everyone, again? That's right. We're back again, and oh my goodness, I cannot wait to talk to you guys about our most anticipated films of 2016. So this is the way we're going to do it. Basically, there are a million and one movies coming out in 2016, and we can go on and on and on for another four years about just these 2016 movies. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of skim through some of the ones that we don't know too much about, that we don't have too much to say about. Then we're going to get into some of the, the good heavy ones. heavy hitters. Yeah, and <laughs> then we're going to get into the two big ones, which I'm sure you both know which one those are. So, with that said, let's get into some of the portion of our video here where we're just going to kind of skim through some of the movies coming out in 2016 that we just don't know too much about, that we haven't seen too much about, so we can't really give a full process thought on them. The first one that I have here is Gambit. Now, the one thing to mention is we don't even know for sure if this film is still scheduled for 2016. As far as we know, that is the release date. It's for 2016. You know my but, feelings on this movie. I've, I've been worried from day one. We've talked about this. Um, I've grown up watching the X-Men movies. Gambit is a badass character in the universe. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows that. He's just as badass as Wolverine. Um, I've been worried about this uh, movie from, you know, from the get-go. See, the thing is, though, is, is the worries can sort of just be calmed down a little bit because we were all worried about Ant-Man. Yeah. And look how that turned out. That's, granted, a, that's, that's a really good point. Granted, yeah. these are two different studios, but we, we always have to reserve our judgment until we see some of the project, you know, in front see, of us. See, the one thing about Ant-Man, though, is it's, uh, you know, if that movie did falter, he's still in the cinematic universe. Um, the way kind of X-Men has played out, Gambit hasn't been seen yet. If this movie does bad, is he going to return in it? Is it going to be Channing Tatum? No. We don't know. I'm just really worried about this movie. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, so moving on, we have Assassin's Creed. I'm really excited for this movie. He, not so much. Um, I'm really excited just because Michael Fassbender, whatever that dude touch, he turns to gold. I'll give you that. Like, I'll he, give you that. Maybe it's because I don't play the game, but I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm going to watch it. And if it surprises me, great. And if it doesn't, I'm okay. With I'm it. just excited for this because if it's good, then finally studios will be like, okay, superhero movies, or sorry, video game movies can be made and they can be made good if some care is put into it. So I'm excited for Assassin's Creed. Uh, next up, we got Ghostbusters. The only reason I'd say that I'm really excited or intrigued in this is the all-female cast. That's a really good approach to it. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. Definitely watch the older ones. Um, once again, you know, we'll watch it. Hopefully again with this kind of like Star Wars, there will be some nostalgia factor. Oh, yeah. Some of the old actors will be in there. Um, it's a different take. I'm liking how they do it. They're going to do it and we're certainly going to watch it. I want to see Yeah, it. absolutely. I mean, the cast looks great and hopefully we're going to see some cameos from some of the original yeah, Ghostbusters sure. in this. So yeah, Ghostbusters looking great. Now this one, again, the Star Wars fans are going to hate me for it, but I just want to skim over because we really don't know too much about it. But you are looking at two new Star Wars fans. Right, so absolutely. Keep that in mind. You got absolutely. two new Star Wars fans. Yeah. Don't forget that. So yeah, <laughs> Star Wars Rogue One. Like I said, we really don't know too much about this. We've seen one photo. It looks pretty cool. It's going to be a different style of Star Wars. You we know, just don't know sure. enough about it. We yet. just don't know enough. I mean, one know? thing the fans can look forward to on That's a Wrap is pretty much every single year from here on in, a Star Wars movie is going to be on Guaranteed. an anticipate, anticipated movie. Guaranteed. And now to have the knowledge about the Star Wars characters and everything, we have a lot more to talk about okay. for those films. So yeah, definitely very excited for that. And uh, we also got Doctor Strange here. This looks pretty good from what we've seen. Again, we just haven't seen enough. We've seen Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange in costume. Looks fantastic, if you ask me. Very comic book accurate. I did like so, that. He yeah. really did look like him. I mean, like, wow, he really looked like mm -hmm. him. Um, the thing I'm most excited for this movie is, I don't, I don't know why I'm iffy on Benedict Cumberbatch. He's a great actor. Uh, I think this movie's going to play a pivotal role in the MCU. Yeah. Something's going to be introduced with the Gemstone. With I know the they Infinity said this, Stones, yeah. with the Infinity Stone, this and Black Panther is going to play a pivotal role. Definitely. And I'm very excited to see this as well because this is basically the next step in Marvel's plan. You know, after Infinity War comes out, these are going to be the characters that carry on the Marvel brand on the big screen. So I'm very excited to see how that pans out with Doctor Strange. Moving on, we have Star Trek Beyond. Now, we saw the first teaser. Some people are very iffy about it. I'm not too much, but again, I'm not very ecstatic for it either. Uh, Justin Lin is directing this. He directed the Fast and the Furious films, or some of them at least. 
and uh, it looks it looks pretty decent. It looks like fun. I'm excited for the movie. One thing I like uh, about the brand new movies is every single movie they brought back every single character. Yeah, we've talked about that. Me and you. I like it when people return for sequels. Chris Pine has been wonderful as Captain Kirk. Um, I was never a real Trekkie growing up either, but the new movies I've watched them all and I've really enjoyed them. Um, we still kind of don't know. Is it going to be Idris Elba? Is he going to be? Oh, gonna for, be the is Kling, he going to be? Going to be the Klingons? Yeah. Like we still kind of don't know. I know some people were disappointed with some of the action in the trailer. I don't know why. It's great action. That's yeah. what we want to see. I think it's just that the hardcore Star Trek fans really just aren't getting the vibe and they're not really feeling it, which I can understand. You know, if you're a hardcore Star Trek fan, even some of the the, the Trekkies didn't like the the first two. So I mean. It is what it is, you know, it's for a different audience now, films are for a different audience now, they have to broaden that horizon and allow a full audience of people to want to go to the theaters to see a Star Trek movie. So I can totally understand where they're coming from. And the last thing that we wanted to skim through was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. This looks like fun, I think the one reason that we wanted to mention this is because Stephen Amell is in it, he's playing Casey Jones. We met Stephen Amell, which was just such an awesome experience. Big He's fans, wonderful guy. Absolutely, wonderful yeah. guy. He got mad at me for wearing a New York Yankees hat <laughs> that day, but such a great. Call him out. I think no, no matter what, we'll always have a spot, soft spot for the yeah. guy. We watch Arrow, Flash, of course. We watch all of those. Um, I want to see his coming out here. How mm -hmm. is he going to be on the big mm -hmm. screen? I think he's a pretty boy. He's he's got the look. Uh, obviously, the guy's in great shape. He's got the look, I think, for big screen. I mean, I kind of compare him and think like, you know, like Tom Cruise. He's got yeah. that kind of like body. Yeah. Tom Cruise, obviously, a gigantic star, but could this be the coming out party for him? I didn't really like part one, but I certainly want to see part two. And of course, we all liked, you know, the tying of the knot of Megan Fox's shirt. Oh, yeah. Trailer, so, yeah. <laughs> and also seeing Bebop and Rocksteady. That's right. That was really back cool. Nice characters. hearkening back to the, yeah. uh, the cartoons and everything. That was really cool. So I'm I know excited. a lot of kids that were in my area that have not watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. He made me grow up on it too. So yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, looking forward to that. So those are the films that we kind of skimmed through. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty, some of the bigger hits of 2016 in terms of comic book movies. So with that said, let's move on to them. Okay, so now that we've skimmed through some of these films, it's time to get into the nitty gritty. Some of the good, the juicy comic book films the of 2015. Hitters. The heavy hitters. Right, or sorry, 2016. Yeah. So let's just get right into it, starting off with Deadpool. I mean, what can't we say about this film? The marketing has been just so awesome. I've never seen a comic book movie like this where it's just, it's all about the comedy. Yeah, where it's just, it's all about the comedy. It's all about the the, the craziness, the, the rated R-ness of it. It's the role that he's been born to play. Yeah. And like a lot of people out there, I got very excited when I saw that it was rated R. Oh my God, Deadpool yeah. Deadpool is a movie yeah. that needs to be rated R. It does. It does. The character in the comics just slaughters people. He yeah. kills a lot of people. I know there's a petition out there apparently that someone's kid wants to see the movie so bad, so the mom <laughs> created a petition to get it PG-13. You can't do a Deadpool movie that's PG-13. Yeah. Yeah. That's the end of the story. That I, is the end of I'm it. I'm hoping I see another really cool sword scene, like, you know, in Wolverine, the best scene. In X-Men Origins. We don't need to talk about We that. don't we need don't to talk, talk about, about X-Men Origins, in, Wolverine. No, we don't need to talk that. about him in that movie, but yeah. he's going to do some serious ass kicking in this movie. The action is going to be amazing, and it kicks off our wonderful 2016 of comic book movies. Yeah, and it's only three, three weeks. weeks away. Three weeks. So. I cannot wait. Yeah. I mean, the breaking the fourth wall, too, that yeah. stuff is just great. And from what we've heard, there are some early reactions. For people who saw a screening like a week ago or just a few days Those ago, lucky I believe. bastards. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and apparently, they are very, extremely positive reviews. Oh, so right. I am seriously looking forward to Deadpool, and it's it's less than a month away. That is insane to even fathom that. So, so next, moving on. Next, we have Suicide Squad. Now we talked about this a lot more in depth and in detail because of the latest trailer. And our thoughts on that will be linked in the description. It was a bonus video. But we want to talk about it. Yeah, again. we got to talk about it a little more. That's <laughs> right. That's true. right. We won't go into too much detail, but I mean, like I said, my, my thoughts are there. Uh, it was a great trailer. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy Will Smith is in the movie. I was just, they showed Jared Leto a little too much for me in the second trailer. I loved how, just kind of like people said about BBS, the second one, that first trailer it was just so maniacal and I was like dying for it. But I understand why that guy showed yeah. him again. Certainly, of course, excited for the movie. I mean, every time I see Jared Leto, I don't see Jared Leto. I see the Joker. Yeah. And that is yeah. that is huge. He seems very methodical. I have a written I'm, story. I'm digging the new, yeah. the new look. Yeah, I've, I, and from what I've heard, I know some people who worked on the set because, of course, it was filmed here in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Gotta put from, that plug in there That's again. right, that's right. <laughs> um, but from what I've heard from some people that I know, there are some really interesting things that Jared Leto did on set. So it's really cool to see that he's just 
he is diving into this character head first, and he he's the Joker. He looks like one of those actors where yeah. he's gonna do what it takes. Where he, to yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm so. But watch glad. the extensive trailer. You're gonna see us really talk. Or about extensive about thoughts on it. Extensive thoughts on it. Yeah. The link will, for that will be in the description box below. The last one we want to talk here in this segment that is is X Men Apocalypse. This is something that my brother here would want to talk a lot more on. You're gonna let me go first. Here. <laughs> he grew up. He grew up on the X Men. The X Men were his favorite things to watch. He had all the toys. Wolverine is his favorite character in comic books. So why don't you kick it off and talk about X Men Apocalypse? Yeah, there's a part of me that wants this to be the best comic book movie of 2000. And it has a chance to be. It, it does have a chance. It really does. But it's against some heavy duty mm -hmm. competition, which we're gonna get into in a moment. But um, it, it's I really want it to be the best of 2016. Mm -hmm. Just like in Infinity. War, War of Thanos, Apocalypse is the almighty, all god villain for X Men. That's right. I mean, if you've read the comic books, right. um, you know, seen the cartoons, this guy has it all. He really can't die. There isn't a thing he can't do. And I want to see that in the movie. That's the point I'm trying to make. I want to see him kicking some ass, mm -hmm. ripping off some X Men's heads. <laughs> I, that would I, be maybe a little too dark. I, I, I really do. He, he's an almighty villain. And I looked all around the internet, little guy, and I don't, I'm wondering, is Hugh Jackman going to be in the movie? Now, it's interesting to think about because, yes, I totally want Hugh Jackman and Wolverine to be in this as well but at the same time what's everyone's favorite X-Men movie or at least one of their favorites X-Men First Class and Wolverine is not in that for no longer than 10 seconds so you talk about reinventing a franchise exactly first class was incredible. exactly was so incredible. it just it just goes to show and even the box office draw from that as well it made a lot of money or enough at least uh, so you can definitely see that this X-Men franchise can carry itself without the character of Wolverine. Granted, this is probably going to be the biggest X-Men movie yet, and I want to see him there. I wouldn't go too crazy if he wasn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be too upset. No, no, you're very right. If he comes at the end of the day and saves the day, I'm still going to be happy because Wolverine's <laughs> the damn coolest yeah. character and ever. And Hugh Jackman is the greatest. If he is the greatest, they're going to have to really unite to beat this villain. That's why, I mean, some things I kind of got an idea of. I know what's going to happen, and I'm hoping I'm not. I'm hoping I'm surprised with, because Michael Fassman, they're going to need him. They're going to yeah. need Magneto, to, Magneto beat, yeah. to beat him, and that's kind of happened in some Same of the Same with movies. the Four Horsemen as well, like Storm yeah. and Psylocke. And they're, they're evidently going to need them to beat him, but I mean, I wish I could just see a movie where he is just nothing but a villain film. Yeah. Because he, him and Magneto, the guy just kills it. Yeah. He just kills it. But regardless, certainly excited. I can't wait to see how it's going to go down. We're going to see the bald Professor Xavier. Yeah. And I think, you know, the ending of the trailer, that was cool. It was yeah. really cool to see that. And I want to see the introduction of some of the new characters. And I think Mystique's going to play a big role with the X-Men team in this one. I think if we'll, uh, Wolverine Hugh Jackman's not in it, it looks like she's quote-unquote going to be a leader for the team. Yeah. Based which, on the trailer. I, which, which is, is we're going to see. We're a little iffy on we're as well. We're going to see, yeah. But, great actor, great actress, of course. She was, you know, pivotal role in the last movie, yeah. but yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Overall, X Men Apocalypse looks great. So does Deadpool and Suicide Squad. Yeah. But here we go. The heavy hitters are up next. The two biggest films of 2015, or sorry, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get on to that. So here we go. Now we're on to the two heavy hitters of 2016 Batman v Superman and Captain America. Civil War. These are definitely the two biggest movies coming out this year. How many times a day, week, month do we talk about these two movies? Every hour, how, every how minute, every second. Texting like, each other, calling each other. It's our I can't, life. I can't wait to see the comment from the fans. I'm wondering if they're doing the same yeah. things. I mean, the anticipation for these two movies are absolutely through the roof. I am so excited. Absolutely. And I mean, it's just, it's such a time to be a comic book fan. Oh, it it's such a time. So, we got a lot to talk about here. We got a lot of ground to cover. We've seen more for Batman v Superman than we have for Captain America Civil War. So I say, let's start the conversation with Captain America Civil War. And of course, you being on the Marvel side of the panel, yes. the less See good the side cup. that is. See the, cup. The, the less good <laughs> side that is. Kick us off with Captain America Civil War. Who didn't like the trailer? Oh, yeah. The trailer was incredible. It was a perfect trailer. It gave us enough to make us, uh, you know, salivate at the mouth, and at the same time, it was just so exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I thought the trailer was perfect. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the badass line at the end, a lot of badass going around with comic yeah. movies this year. Yeah. You know, it showed us Black Panther. He looked incredible. Looked great. Um, the line at the end, everybody talked about the line. You know, he, sorry, he's my friend. So was I. You know, yeah. and, he, and he has a black eye, and he's fighting so both. Good. And he's fighting both of them at the same time. So good. He's fighting. I, no, I can't wait to see what this is gonna do in the MCU. Mm. Um, you know, there's rumors around as Captain America gonna die, which I hope he does not. 
Uh, a lot can go down in this movie, and it, what's going to be kind of, is there going to be a central villain? We haven't seen that. I mean, I'm so excited to see the second trailer. The NFL playoffs are coming, a lot of viewership there. Yeah. I can't wait to see if the second trailer is going to live up to the hype of the first yeah. one. And of course, the big question, what's going to happen around Spider-Man? Yeah. What role is he going to play? Absolutely. Is he going to, I'm hoping nothing like an end of credits, or... And based on the way the trailer was, we kind of got to see a long timeline of the trailer, yeah. right? Yeah. So where is he going to fit in? What is he going to do kudos to the marvel people for making this happen the russo brothers kevin feige getting him signed on and getting him into this movie because it's a pivotal role in the civil war yeah comic books excuse me but um i, I can't wait to see us all i mean in the second trailer if they just show a hand a web yeah anything that's it's it. gonna be crazy it's like that first time that we saw joker and Suicide it's gonna Squad. be insane it's gonna be insane yeah no i totally agree and with captain america civil war it's just it's going to be so crazy because one way or another, by the end of that movie, there's going to be a rift in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Whether it's these two teams or these two characters being at odds against each other, there's yes. going to be a massive rift. The same way there was with Winter Soldier. And what is that rift going to lead to? That's yeah. the, I mean, that's what, that in essence, what we love about these superhero yeah. movies. Because we don't know. I mean, are we going to see uh, Iron Man and Captain America again until Infinity War? Exactly, we, yeah. We have no idea what's going to go on. Yeah. That's why we love doing that's a wrap and talking about this. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm definitely I'm so excited to see what the hell goes down in Captain America Civil War. And I'm very excited to see the introduction of Spider-Man. This is yeah. something we've been waiting for for years, over a yeah. decade, to see yeah. Spider-Man stand side by side with Iron Man, Captain America, the Hulk, and all that. And while we're not necessarily getting that in Captain America Civil War, we will eventually because of the fact that they finally introduced this right. character. So it's really great to see that he's going to be appearing in Captain America Civil War. And I can't wait to see what his role is going to be like, big or small. It's just going to be great to see that character finally introduced in the MCU. I can't wait to see it as well. You know me, I have a little worries of him being very, very no. young. I know they're going to redo the Spider-Man movies, but I do have worries about him just being very young and standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as you said, with the big guns of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But I certainly hope that he's going to do a good job. And I know that you were telling me... The, 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 Russo, the Russos yeah. and everyone, they really rallied for this actor and for this character to be in the film. So, I mean, I trust Marvel's judgment. We've always had some things to say about their casting, but it always ends up being good. Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, yeah. Chris Hemsworth as Thor, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. It's always, there's always some skepticism, but it always ends but they, up being they good. They always get it right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. Well, Marvel always gets it right. Oh my but, God. Yeah. Because Ben so, Affleck's a bad Batman, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But so speaking, why, don't, why don't you go ahead now? Yeah, speaking <laughs> of Batman and Batman v Superman, let's talk about my most anticipated film of 2016, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. We're going to have a little focus on that subtitle. Let me say here. one thing quick before you get too excited. Best TV film spot I've ever seen. Oh, the, the, the confrontation? Best oh one my I've ever God, seen. that's Best right. One I've ever seen. I mean, listen. There is nothing more Batman in the world than him driving head on into a god in the Batmobile, having that god rip the roof off of his car and have him still get up and tell the god with that he's the god make giving him, him a warning. Exactly. With the god giving but him a still, warning. <laughs> to his face, he's like, I'm gonna make you bleed. Come on, that is so Batman. And that's all a testament to Zack Snyder. The dude knows. He gets it. He, he gets knows it. the source material he does. He does. to a T. I know a lot of people had problems with Man of Steel, him included, yes. and that's totally <laughs> understandable. You know, I don't agree. I think it's a friggin' wonderful film. It's very close to the Superman character in some iterations of him in the comics. So Zack Snyder respects source material. He's really playing that out here in Batman v Superman. I cannot wait that to see this movie. That one scene made me think so much more of Henry Cavallo Superman. Yeah. It's amazing how one scene, one line out of a character's mouth can make you just think so much more of him. Because, you know, we love seeing that badass. It was the most badass TV spot it's ever. It's just the gravitas ever. and just the, the, how intimidating he is and just everything about this. I am just so, so excited. Just the one thing to me that I, that I always go back to when you think about it, Batman Superman and Wonder Woman are all going to be in a film together for the first time ever yes. in the history of film. That is just insane. That is mind-blowing to me. We're going to finally see these characters come together. Not only that, we're going to see Superman and Batman fight. That is so 
Cool. And, and you know, that really leads into a big point that we want to make. Yeah. That's something that I, I've really uh, agreed with you here. Definitely. On. You know, a lot of people, you know, look at this movie mm-hmm. and then after the second trailer, they got really scared. I'm not sure why. And I was one of them, but after the TV spot and, you know, the next trailer, I'm, I'm through the roof for it now. But this movie is Batman vs. Superman. Dawn, Dawn of, of Justice. Justice. We've got to remember that. I know the little guy has some great thoughts around this. I just want to put in my two cents for it. Mm-hmm. It's Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It's setting up the Justice League. Yeah. You know, we've got to remember that. They're going to have the epic fight. They're going to have the confrontation together. But they've got to use this movie as the ground for yeah. work to yeah. set up that. Universe. Exactly. Fans got to remember that. Even when we see movie goers and people that we watch, they keep on referring this movie as Batman vs. Superman. Sometimes we don't even add the Dawn of Justice part. Yeah. It is Dawn of Justice. We are going to appreciate it down the road. Definitely. This movie Definitely. Sets that movie when you finally see the Justice League standing together, you're going to lose your mind. The same when we finally got that shot in Avengers. 100%. When you see all the characters standing side by side, that is something you go crazy about to see. I'm actually getting together. very excited for it. I know. After I know. That last poster, I really am. And then they man- mentioned Green Lantern, you know, so I'm getting very excited. Exactly. For uh, the, just the main thing is to think that. In 2017, the Justice League is coming. There's no if, ands, or buts. The tw- in 2017, Justice League Part One will hit theaters. This is the film that's going to set that up. Whether you like it or not, that is what's happening. Wonder Woman is not going to be the film to set up the Justice League. This is a big enough movie that has to do that. Exactly. Yeah. And they're, they, I know a lot of people like to compare DC to Marvel, but they're doing something very backwards from the Marvel. They formula. are doing it backwards, but Marvel. Pass it the ground. Oh, oh, come ground, on. ground work oh. for it. Oh, Thank on. you, Iron Man Part One. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, overall, I mean, like, I cannot express my excitement for this movie enough. You've seen me go nuts about it on Twitter day through night. This movie, it, it's gonna blow people away. Yeah. It's gonna be super impactful to the comic yes. book universe of film. And, and overall, the point that you know we really want to get across. I mean, you look at these movies. What do they do? You know, we watch The Revenant. Do you think about a Revenant two? Do you think about a Revenant three? No, you love the movie. Yeah, because. But when you watch Batman vs Superman. When you watch um, uh, Captain America 3, you're already thinking, what is going to happen? What's next? That is the absolute beauty of superhero movies, why we do that's wrap, because of the speculation, the anticipation, what's going to happen, how it's going to go down. We're always talking about 2019. Because there's never never a day that goes by where you don't have a question to ask about these films. How's it going to go down? Who's going to appear? What new character? That the beauty of superhero movies is unparalleled. And I hate that people think that these things are ruining the Hollywood market, and they think that just films, superhero films, are like oversaturating them. I know people that have said that. You gotta, you gotta sit there and be like, come on, you know, like these are films that are not only just coming out and providing Hollywood money to make movies like The Revenant, like Spotlight, Sicario, all these cool it's films. Jobs. It's providing thousands of jobs for people in the industry, and that's a huge thing that you need to sit down and appreciate. Because that's something you can't say in the history of film except for right now. So superhero films are such a good thing and I'm so glad they're around because we love them. Yeah. Right? So that wraps it up for all our most anticipated films of 2016. But here's the most important thing. It's really hard too because I really want to talk about Civil War more. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) But here's the most important thing. What do you guys think? What are your most anticipated films of 2016? We want to see your lists. And your thoughts in the comment section below. I log on. I look at the comments. I actually, between these two movies, because I think they're the big heavy hitters, I can't wait to see what fans Me neither. What are they excited for more? How's it going to go down? That's right. So with all that said, please don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook on our respective social media. The links for that will be in the description box below. I'm your host, Aaron Caboose XBL. This is my co-host, Ender. Don't forget to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. That's a wrap.